wonder the Aborigines loved living in this area. Apart from the fresh water and the natural beauty of the place, Lake Jasper and the surrounding Gingilup wetlands provided so much in the way of bush tucker and natural medicines. The name Gingilup means place of the spirits. Significant archaeological sites have been found in the area, including eight sites containing Aboriginal artefacts beneath the lake itself. These sites are of worldwide significance and are Australia's only underwater prehistoric site of human habitation. Protected by the water, the Aboriginal artefacts, along with the remains of ancient tree stumps, are vital clues to understanding the heritage of Australia's indigenous people. Lake Jasper is located in the Dontracusto National Park, between Pemberton and Augusta. It's the largest natural freshwater lake in Western Australia, and is part of an extensive system of freshwater lakes, marshes and shrub swamps. The area is a breeding ground for some 25 species of water bird, and is a major nursery area for freshwater fish and frogs. So far, the Gingalup Jasper wetlands have escaped agricultural and industrial exploitation. If Cable Sands has its way, that's all set to change. Just a few hundred metres from the western edge of the lake, Cable Sands intends mining for mineral sands. Ordinarily, this would not seem a problem. However, the proposed mine site would effectively cut the wetland area in half. Not only would this do considerable damage to the wetlands themselves, but pollutants from the mine could potentially enter Lake Jasper itself. This sign is in the heart of the area Cable Sands wants to mine. Once part of the Dontracusto National Park, the area was excised from its national park status in 1996 by the court Liberal government to facilitate mineral exploration. Cable Sands say that the mining will have little or no long-term adverse effects on the lake and that the wetland areas they plan to mine will be restored. They claim that because the mine will be a few hundred metres from the summer shoreline of the lake, pollutants generated by mining will not be a threat. However, there is a vast difference between the summer shoreline of the lake and the winter shoreline. In winter, the water level rises significantly and spills over into the adjacent wetlands. It effectively increases the size of the lake and it extends right into the proposed mining lease. Water moves from the northwest to the southeast across the proposed mine site and into Lake Jasper. Apart from the obvious damage done by excavating the wetlands, there are many other serious environmental concerns regarding mineral sands mining in the area. There's the reduction of water depth in both the surrounding wetland area and in Lake Jasper due to extraction of the groundwater and the contamination of surface and groundwater. Lowering the depth of the water by as little as 30 to 50 centimetres in spring or early summer could potentially dry out large areas of shrub thickets and tall or low sedges. The wetlands would then be unsuitable for breeding of many water bird species. This is of particular concern because the Gingalup wetland system is ranked third among the 27 wetlands in Western Australia in terms of the number of species breeding there. Contamination of wetland water could also reduce or eliminate stocks of organisms such as fish, shrimps, kunaks and frogs on which many of the water birds feed. Acid sulphate soils have already been identified at the proposed mine site. Sediment in acid sulphate soils contains iron sulphides, which is principally iron pyrite. The exposure of pyrite in these soils to oxygen by drainage or excavation leads to the generation of sulfuric acid. Acidic leachate can dissolve clay, 
and release toxic concentrations of arsenic, aluminium, iron and other heavy metals into the water bodies. Water draining from these areas of acid sulphate soils will affect water quality. This can lead to the death or disease of aquatic organisms and severely modify or even change the vegetation. BHP Billiton's Beanup Mineral Sands Mine, only 40 kilometres to the west of Lake Jasper, was closed in February 1999 because of problems relating to acid sulphate soils. Although the site is being rehabilitated, questions still remain over the 90 hectares of above-ground dams containing acid sulphate slurry. An audit progress report prepared by the Beanup Consultative Group in June 2002 stated, The groundwater of the mine site is low in pH, high in sulphate and high in dissolved metals, for example aluminium and iron. That effectively describes acid sulphate soils. The report continues. The plumes of contaminated water are moving and will continue to move through the surrounding groundwater. There is no doubt, however, that the plumes will one day reach the Scott River within the Scott National Park. Along with impacting on the surface and groundwater hydrology and also flora and fauna and the spread of dieback, Acid sulphate soils are one of the main issues in relation to the Gingalup Jasper mining proposal. Jeff Evans and Andy Russell are members of the D'Entrecasteaux Coalition and have been campaigning for the protection of the Gingalup Jasper wetlands since the threat of mining first emerged. These wetlands are essential for flora, fauna. We, we have seven of the eight known uh, freshwater fish in the southwest. It's uh, a breeding ground for frogs and it's a really important nesting ground. We have to care for this land, we have to care for these wetlands. The state government's attitude towards conservation areas will have dramatic effects on nature-based tourism in the future, as many of our most popular national parks are now under mineral exploration. D'Entrecasteaux National Park and Lake Jasper are the jewels in the crown of wilderness areas in the southwest and provide tourism that is vital to south coast communities. Uh, I'm Andy Russell, I run a local tourist company uh, out of Pemberton and the Lake Jasper and D'Entrecasteaux area is very important for myself and my visitors. This is a pristine lake and an undisturbed landform and this is very vital that people have the opportunity to come and enjoy such an amazing place. To be able to be here, watch the sunrise, sunset over a beautiful, beautiful lake, the largest freshwater lake in Western Australia. And to imagine that we have a government that allows the land of a national park to be converted into a, a tenure which will allow potentially miners to come here and put a great big fat ugly mine right next to a lake is unbelievable. So in the future the potential is that we can come here and we'll have a five storey high billowing mine polluting and destroying this incredible amazing environment. It just cannot be allowed. I'm just on the perimeter of Lake Jasper here and what a magnificent ecotourism attraction. Particularly for um, indigenous tourism or for cultural tourism or heritage tourism. The amount of diversity here is just phenomenal. And I cannot understand for the life of me why a mining company would be allowed in here to 
destroy one of our national treasures. And um, the prospects of um, nature-based tourism in this particular region is immense. And um, the old saying is that you don't know what you've got until it's gone, is exactly what we've got here. The state government is investigating the extraction of water from the Yarragadee Aquifer in an attempt to maintain high levels of good clean drinking water for the people of Perth. The Yarragadee Aquifer runs very close to the surface of Lake Jasper and the Gingalup Jasper wetlands. There's a risk of pollution if mining were to proceed. Will the state government learn from the mistakes of the past and say no to the Gingalup Jasper mine proposal? The South West Coalition of Aboriginal Corporations and custodians of traditional lands have lodged a native title claim over the area. Wayne Webb is the Aboriginal spokesperson for Lake Jasper. We believe that anywhere where, the, where spirits are or a significant place like that, it should be avoided, you know, people being there or doing anything there. It's okay to visit a place and then leave, leave it as it was. But um, because it's so significant is, um, is because uh, the lake itself used to be a little spring and the people used to camp around the springs and that's why we'll find there's about nine different campsites around the lake at, in the lake itself at the moment. And um, right next door to Lake Jasper is a place called uh, Lake Quichip and there is a place where uh, the, wife of, the wife of King Bunnich, who's, uh, her name is uh, Ginny, but um, her tribal name is Nanading, and she came from Lake Quidjup and next door to Lake Quidjup is uh, the home grounds of uh, Milian, who was the wife of Woodich, which a Margaret River area is um, named after. So the significance of the whole area is that the wives and the tribals, the tribe of the wives of these kings actually came from the Lake Jasper area. Cable Sands currently has some 30 other mining tenements, ranging from north of Rockingham to south of Nanup, covering some 2,400 hectares. The Gingalup Jasper wetlands are a national asset, rich in ecological diversity and Aboriginal heritage. If you want this area, which is now excised for mining, returned to national park status and protected for the future from industrial exploitation, then it's essential that you get in contact with your state representatives and let them know. After all, it's your national park